welcome to the online lecture series of value added courses offered by department of mechanical engineering on basics of non destructive testing that is also known as ndt okay. so the basic course content will contain the different kinds of uh, non destructive testing techniques which are being used uh, and what are its implications on the society and the industry what what are the applications and how we can uh, adjust and use them in the industries okay so the basic contents of today's lecture would be on the introduction to ndt the definitions and what are the destructive testing uh, techniques uh, what is basically destructive and why we have to switch from destructive testing to non destructive testing then we are having the comparison of destructive and non destructive testing and what are the different kind of non destructive testing that are being used so this is the main uh, flow of lecture today okay so the first one is the introduction to ndt so what is ndt ndt is a non destructive testing technique in which the part is not being uh, destroyed for evaluation of certain properties or evaluation of defects jahan bhi hame wherever we want to have uh, the defects uh, we want to find out the defects so we do not need to break the part uh, or destroy it to evaluate the defects ki hame usme where where our uh, where our the defects are so that we can find them easily and it is also known as a non destructive inspection or non destructive evaluation okay so the definition of ndt which is said to be as the use of non invasive techniques non invasive means those techniques which do not destroy the material okay non invasive means which do not destroy the material techniques to determine the integrity of the material now what does integrity mean integrity means uh, the uniformity of the material okay so uh, if the material is having any defect within so it will not be uh, uniform so and it will it is also known as non integrated material okay wherever the uh, material gets discontinued so basically the non destructive techniques are used to uh, evaluate the integrity of the material whether the material is homogeneous throughout or not and if there is any kind of any defect present it could be easily visualized or it could be find out then what are the uh, first of all before moving to non destructive testing we should be keeping in mind about the different kind of destructive testing okay so what is destructive testing so the and why do we perform destructive testing so what is destructive testing it is also known as destructive physical analysis test which are carried out on the different specimens so that we could find the mechanical properties of the materials such as uh, its um, you can say the young's modulus its strength in different parameters like hardness testing or in shear or in tensile or in compression okay and generally materials are subjected to the different kind of loads which we are going to see in the subsequent uh, slide that what are the different kind of loads that a material goes through so that we can have a destructive testing of the material now over here we can see very well that there are different kind of loads that can be applied to a material the first one is known as a tension okay in which the load is being applied on the longitudinal axis of the material and in such a manner that it pulls the material okay so the material will tend to elongate and if the load is further increased it is going to break then the second one is the compression okay where what we see is that the again the load is being applied along the longitudinal axis of the material but at the same time it is trying to compress it so that it is it will uh, shorten the length okay then the next one is shearing okay in which we can see that over a particular plane the material tends to break then there is torsion in which there is twisting of the material okay and then a bending now what is the difference between bending and torsion is that over here in the torsion we are having a moment which is being applied a torque that is being applied along the longitudinal axis jo bhi uska longitudinal axis hai about that we are having a torque that is being applied and in the bending we are having uh, a transverse load is being applied on the longitudinal axis so and then we are having the buckling you can see now this buckling is also a kind of bending in which we are having uh, a short you can see the uh, it is going to buckle it is being bending from the center so it is basically for the thin sections where we find that we are having a certain buckling in the 
material okay so these are different kind of destructive testing loads that are being applied on a material so that we can find out that what is the actual uh, strength of a material in a particular loading conditions okay now in all these different conditions we can see that the material is being destroyed that means suppose you are having a car okay and you want to find out it is not working properly on certain parameters so what we want is we want to find the defect such that we can determine whether without failing without breaking the car we can find that what's the problem and we can do the remedy on to it okay so that procedure is basically non destructive testing when the part can be reused again okay just by finding the defect so that we can if we can correct it so we are going to correct it so but in these cases when we apply these kind of loadings onto a material what is going to happen is the material is going to deform and we cannot reuse it again okay so and this is the conventional way of testing the materials okay for strength and whenever we want to find uh, a strength of the material in a particular condition okay so we use these different kind of loadings and for these we are having different kind of testing procedures okay so now you can see that there are different kind of testing techniques which are destructive in nature okay and why we are again talking about destructive testing techniques because we have to discuss non destructive testing but again i am focusing first on destructive testing so that if this portion is clear we can move on to the next portion which is non destructive okay and we can differentiate that when we should use destructive testing and when we should not use uh, destructive testing okay so the destructive testing techniques is basically divided into three parts that is the static testing techniques impact testing and the cycling testing okay the static testing techniques include the ten, uh, the tensile test compression test shear test hardness test and creep test now what is tensile test as we have seen in the earlier slide just okay just a second as you have seen in the earlier slide that we were having the tensile test okay so in the tensile test what was happening the material was getting elongated okay and in the compression we are having the compression of the material okay and for the shear test we are going to load the material in this particular manner okay so these are the different kind of testing and these are the testing uh, tests which are being called as the uh, tensile test compression test shear test hardness test and creep test now tensile test and compression test are mostly performed on the universal testing machine as we know it as utm okay and the hardness test and, uh, is performed on various different parameters like we have bindel hardness then we have rockwell hardness and different kind of hardness test is also there now from the tensile and uh, compression test what we find out we found out uh, we calculate or determine the strength of the material under a particular loading and same is the case with hardness the hardness uh, just tells us that what is the surface uh, hard how much hard is the surface that if uh, any impurity or if uh, anything hits it on the surface then how much deeper it could be penetrated okay so basically how much hard the material is and then we are having the impact test now impact test to find out the ultimate uh, strength of the material okay and the ultimate strength of the material is found out by using two tests one is the isot charpy te isot test and another one is the charpy test okay and then we are we are having the cyclic test in which we find out the fatigue of the material in which uh, what we do is we load the material on a cyclic uh, loader okay and the load is being repeated cycle by cycle and after a certain amount of period is elapsed the material fails so that we can determine that how much cycles are required to fail a material in a particular uh, under a particular cyclic loading conditions okay so we are having the cyclic testing which is also a destructive testing technique okay now we move ahead now it is a slight comparison between destructive testing and non destructive testing okay so the first there are certain parameters on base on basis of which we classify them the first one is the purpose now the purpose of a destructive testing when we have to do the destructive testing is it is carried out to determine the properties of the material the physical properties of the material like uh, its shear strength its uh, longitudinal strength or its compressive strength or different kind of strength under the different kind of loading condition theek hai us conditions mein hum we try to find out we uh, we go with the destructive testing 
okay and for the non destructive testing when it is used when we do not want to fail the material but we just want to check whether uh, the material is uniform or not okay you can see it it's written it's used to find out the properties of the material and to find out defects okay we find out defects over here okay but over here we uh, in the destructive testing we find out the properties of the material okay then the second one is specimen the specimen but obvious in the destructive testing it's going to break and it cannot be reused again but in the non destructive testing the material remains intact okay it doesn't uh, get any harm uh, whether it is defected or not defected the defect does not increase either okay uh, it is not there the defect is going to increase so it's going to be uh, reusable again okay then the defects cannot be found using destructive testing so the destructive testing is not uh, used for finding out defects it is used to finding uh, for calculating of uh, properties okay whereas the ndt is used to find out defects in the material or any particular structure okay then cost is more effective for the destructive and for the non destructive it is uh, slightly less then examples of destructive testing includes the bending test and sile test which we have already discussed and for the non destructive testing we are having the new technologies like ultrasonic testing radiography testing eddy current testing visual inspection and many more okay so these are some of the types of non destructive testing techniques the first one is first and most commonly used by each and every one is the visual inspection technique and this technique the person starts when uh, he or she is in his childhood okay so whenever what is visual inspection is we inspect things just by visualizing them okay and what is visualizing just by seeing the thing we interpret that okay whether a component is good or bad okay uh, we do uh, now in this we can have different kind of aids or not that depends that we'll see in the slides to come then we are having the second one is liquid penetrant inspection in which we are going to apply a liquid penetrant onto a material and uh, we are going to inspect the material okay then the there are magnetic particle inspection ultrasonic testing eddy testing and radiography testing so these six techniques are the most uh, commonly and most widely used non destructive testing techniques uh, which are being used in the industry now this is a visual inspection now what does visual inspection means again as you can see in the images there are two kind of uh, images you can see one is a robotic eye and another one is a person holding a boroscope in the hand now what they are doing is they are trying to inspect the part just by visualizing it now this visualization can be of two kinds one is uh, like you can see it's a jet engine and the jet engine uh, internal assembly is being checked with the help of a boroscope and what does a boroscope do it is a flexi a flexible boroscope in which we can have the camera is reaches to the point where we want to watch it okay and it is being uh, you can see the visual onto the monitor which is being held by the operator or the tester okay uh, then the robotic eye you can uh, send the drone or the robot to a particular place and it goes and it shows you or it transmits you the images uh, for your visual inspection okay so what you are doing we are uh, not changing the component but we are just visualizing it and uh, checking it that whether there is a defect or not okay now what are its uh, you can see it is being uh, used to inspect the railroads it is being used to inspect the heat exchanger the internal portions of the heat exchangers and various other uh, jet assemblies are being used uh, are being inspected using visual inspection and this is one of the most uh, important kind of uh, you can say inspection technique along with other techniques okay now the second one is liquid penetrant inspection okay now over here uh, what we can see in the images that there are uh, two kinds of objects are being there which are being coated with a particular kind of liquid penetrant okay and the defects can be seen under the ultraviolet light and whenever we see the defects they come out uh, they brighten up and so that we can visualize them okay then the next one is magnetic particle inspection now over here the concept is somewhat same like uh, liquid penetrant test but the uh, slight variation is that we are using over here the magnetic field okay and what happens is suppose this is our test specimen and we subject it to a magnetic field and there is a defect in there okay so what will happen is there is a res uh, there is a formation of residual magnetism that means you can see that the magnetic lines are being disrupted okay and a 
localized north and south pole is being generated in this region so what happens due to that is uh, the particles the magnetic particles which are being uh, loaded onto the top of the surface tends to collect on that localized magnetic field and we get a representation you can see the magnetic particles are being collected onto the cracks area and in the case of fluorescent magnetic particles whenever we see the part under the ultraviolet rays we can see the damage in this kind of a image okay so as you can see uh, this is a rotor of a shaft and uh, we can see that there are huge amount of cracks that can be visualized under the ultrasonic light so this is a kind of magnetic particle inspection then we are having ultrasonic inspection now okay this is a very good uh, part which most of the people have undergone under uh, medical inspection and they know it as ultraviolet testing okay so what is that in ultrasonic sorry not ultraviolet ultrasonic inspection now in ultrasonic sonic means the sound okay so whenever we use sound waves to travel into a body and we uh, we receive the signals such as to detect any kind of a defect so these uh, this kind of testing is known as ultrasonic inspection and most of this inspection is being carried out uh, in the medical field as we know it under uh, for the uh, pregnant women's or or for certain conditions like uh, abnormalities in the stomach or uh, in the belly okay so there we use ultrasonic testing in the medical field but how it is related to industrial applications so whatever material is there so the material is the same you can see if if it if we are having a plate and we want to find that whether there is a hidden crack or not okay so in those cases what we do is we use this ultrasonic testing uh, machines a probe is being used which send the sound waves into the material okay and you can see it from here that the reflected waves are being sent back and which is being reflected onto the CRO or the oscilloscope you can see and the initial pulse is there then we are having the crack echo the crack uh, sound comes back uh, and the receiver receives it and we get a crack echo and then we are have a back surface echo okay so by this method we tend to find out whether there is a defect or not if there is no defect so there will be no crack echo onto the oscilloscope so this is a simple uh, testing technique but it is widely used and it gives you very accurate results it can give uh, the dimensions of our internal defect uh, properly it can give you volume it can give you the areas it can give you the proper dimensions of a inside geometry then the next one is eddy current testing now what are eddy currents eddy is basically uh, these are the currents which are formed as a residual part okay of a magnetic field so whenever uh, just a second okay so let us suppose this is a conductive material and a coil is being uh, placed in which we supply the ac current so what happens is a magnetic field is being generated and due to this magnetic field eddy currents are being produced okay which is uh, you can say a by production due to the lenz law okay which says that uh, whenever there is a change in magnetic field in a particular area what happens is it tends to Uh, resist that change okay and the material develops its own current which is known as the eddy current okay and due to which what happens is a current is being formed and uh, the defects on the surface can be detected using this technique you can see that this is the eddy uh, magnetic field that is being generated okay now you can see on the image on the left hand side we are having a probe okay which is uh, which is internally fitted with certain coils okay this is a pencil probe and it produces eddy current on the surface and the test results can be again viewed on the oscilloscope okay uh, in the same manner it will just uh, show you the images wherever the defects is the there will be a change in the residual magnetic field okay the next one is radiography and now what is radiography means radiography means it's the another name uh, for the testing techniques which we know and known as which we know them as x rays okay now x rays is again uh, one of the mostly used testing techniques in the medical terminology and most of every one of us has gone through the x rays and what we know about the x rays is that uh, whatever material we want to uh, do the testing what we do is we keep that portion uh, under the x rays and below that there is a film which records the uh, defects now 
radiography is mostly about uh, radio uh, radiation waves and we can see that the waves are having different properties the shorter wavelength waves are having higher energy okay and more energy is required to penetrate more denser material okay so when we are talking about industrial x-rays so the, those x-rays which uh, which are used to find out the defects in suppose a steel plate those intensities of x-rays will be pretty much higher in comparison to those which we use for medical x-rays so medical x-rays are not that much harmful for human bodies but uh, when we are talking about industrial x-rays so those are very very high intensity x-rays uh, those are being used okay and due to which uh, those are uh, these kind of tests are carried out in a contained area okay and the x-rays are simple it's like a cathode ray uh, the electrons are being ejected from a cathode ray into onto the anode and we can see that certain radiations are emitted at very high voltages okay and these are known as x-rays which uh, hit the material okay so these are the basically uh, six kind of uh, six types of uh, testing techniques which are being used in the non-destructive testing techniques and which we are going to cover in this our course of uh, basics of NDT okay now in the further lectures to come uh, in the further lectures to come what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss each of these NDT techniques in detail what are their applications how they are developed and how they are uh, used okay what are the steps that are being followed and their applications and what are the standards that are being used in the industries pertaining to each of the uh, technique thank you